Lever Brothers, the makers of Rinso, Life Boy, and Lux Flakes present Leave It to the Girls with Terry Deer. Let's leave it to the girls. Let's leave it to the girls. If you've a problem puzzling you, and you don't know just what to do, ask Terry Deer to help you and we Thank you very much, and how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Here are your favorite girls once again. Elizabeth Riddell. Hello, Terry. Josephine O'Neill. Hello, everybody. And Eva Carr Glynn. Hello. And you know, we've invited to uh, come along and spend a little time with us today, a very great friend of yours, Owen Ainley. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Terry. My Thank word, it's good for you to be back, Owen. It's oh. lovely to be back with such lovely girls. What am I saying? How can I lie with a straight <laughs> face like that? <laughs> you know, I did intend to have a little soapbox ready for you today to present to you before we started on the show. Rinso, I hope. Yes, of course. What? <laughs> Is there any other? No. <laughs> not. Well, let's get to work on our first letter, hey? It's from Mad Hatter, and it's a Melbourne letter. It says, two weeks ago, I bought what I consider one of the best and most unusual hats it's ever been my pleasure to wear. On triumphantly parading it for my husband, he nearly had a spasm and laughed until his false teeth dropped out. I was very hurt by this because I consider that the hats which were raved about so much in the newspapers recently were not a patch on my own. I might mention I nearly always get the same reactions from my husband about my hats. Is this a fair thing? Miss Neva Carr Glenn, are you a hat wearer or not? Um, well, not really, Terry. I have a couple of boxes of hats, but I very seldom ever put them on. <laughs> but don't all men laugh at women's hats? I don't know. I've seen a lot I could laugh about. I don't know if I dare do it at home, though. That's well, even <laughs> my son does. Does he? <laughs> about yours that you keep in a box? Yes, when I've dropped one out. Joe, you're not a hat wearer either, are you? Uh, well, I wear hats from uh, uh, conviction, not from preference. Mm. But I love this business about men laughing at women's hats. It's one of the oldest jokes in the world, and it's got a terrible note of envy in it. You see, all a man oh, can do oh. is to put on something felt like that. Mm. He can't express his personality any longer. We can. Oh, I don't know. Those little Tyrolean hats with the feathers and the turn up at the bay, they were all very expressive. Could you wear one once No. For us? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, Betty. Are you a hat man? I carry one, as a matter of fact. Do you? I always yeah. have one, but I usually carry it rather than wear it. Well, I've got a hat. A hat? Uh, a hat, yes. Mm -hmm. A. And, uh, but I must say it's terribly usual. She says she has an unusual hat. Mm. That, I think, is perhaps not the best kind of hat. Well, I must confess that those mushroom uh, jazz ones, you know, and all that sort of thing, those things look like pom-poms and, and marshmallows. And all, I must confess they give me uh, considerable laughter. Well, you see, if women were the hats that men prefer, we would all go round in large straw hats with a blue bow in front. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Owen. Well, I don't think you've answered the poor girl's problem. I think of course she's... they haven't. No, they have not a scrap. <laughs> they never do. They never do. <laughs> they have a heck Sabotage. of a good time. <laughs> Praising themselves up. Oh. Now, I, I think the girl should try out her unusual hats firstly on the dog. <laughs> and if the dog stands it, then take a husband's false teeth away so they won't fall out and trot out the newest uh, oh, hat. I tell you what, take the husband's false teeth away and bite the dog. Bite the dog. <laughs> Make the news. <laughs> Put them on the hat. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the Mad Hatter of Melbourne, I, uh, I think your hat is probably a delight and a joy. Take no notice of your husband. He's having a good time well. too, so everybody's happy. Eh? Really and truly. <laughs> Give him a little bit of joy once in his life. Okay, put his teeth back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, just a moment. If you're thinking of buying a washing machine, and your problem is what washing powder to use in that new machine, here's some sound advice from Mrs. Sowden of Mosman. Mrs. Sowden has used a washing machine ever since she was married, and she writes, I have never used anything but Rinso in my washing machine. Those richer, softer sides gets everything dazzling. Rinso. That's the thing to use. Rinso, the only product recommended by all leading washing machine manufacturers. And that's a real guarantee. The makers of your washing machine recommend Rinso for a wash that's clean. Take the advice of those who know and make your wash day choice. Rinso.
Rinso costs less, too. Compare the price, compare the size of all wash day products. Rinso gives you far more suds for your money. Richer suds, softer suds. Kind to hands, gentle with clothes, safe for all types of washers. For washing machines, as for coppers, it's Rinso. Rinso is the best wash day value of all. Well, our school girl of Queensland has um, a rather more serious letter for us. It says, my 11-year-old daughter's always done very well at school and exams. She topped the class in three term exams and is now second in class. She's always very excited about the first placings, but lately has been put out because we don't give her something like a watch for coming top. Both my husband and myself like her to do well, but neither of us believe there should be material gain for this success. However, when she does not come top, the girl who beats her, it's always the same one, gets an expensive gift from her parents. My daughter didn't worry at first, but now seems to be of the opinion that she too should have an expensive gift. We always highly praise her and give her a few extra shillings in her pocket money and give her all the encouragement in the world. What do the girls think about this? Well, do you encourage them with an expensive gift or any sort of a gift or not? Betty? I think they do very well by her now. Uh, they're very sympathetic, encouraging, and understanding parents. Um, I didn't. I wasn't in this racket when I was at school about getting <laughs> things. I used to compete with a girl for, for for top. We went for seven years at boarding school. She and I fought it out. Mm -hmm. And in most subjects, one of us was for you know we, that was the way it went, first and second. But uh, I don't think I even got a kind word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look what happened to you. You finished on the panel of Leave It to the Girls. Yes, perhaps it should be a lesson to me. <laughs> I don't know, Joe. What do you think about it? No, I think it's a sad thing. It gives a child the wrong idea of why she should be at the top of the class. I think they'll have to explain to her that the other little girl uh, ha ha parents have different ideas. We didn't get any prizes, but we did get... I remember I got a beautiful watch for getting my trick. But then I was of a certain age by the time I got oh, to a trick. I wasn't mm -hmm. 11. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I'm afraid I can't go along with you completely in this because I, I do believe that um, encouragement can be a tremendous help. And I don't oh, mean yes. in your case, Betty, where you're, you're top or equal top or second top sort of thing. I think to the, to the ones lower down the scale, I think that bit of encouragement can be of tremendous assistance. I really do. Oh, I don't oh, agree well. with you, Terry. Miss Neva Carglin now has the floor <laughs> willy-nilly. Thank you, Neva. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Uh, no, I, I think it, um, it's a wrong principle. What, it's to a give sort of, encouragement to a child? No, not to give encouragement, but it's a sort of form of bribery yeah, in a sense. Bribery. And I think... Uh, Fortunately, I say in a way, I'm afraid I haven't got a brilliant child. I, they'd be awfully hard to live with, wouldn't they? <laughs> but uh, I'm very pleased if he tries and makes an effort. And it's a sort of understanding thing. Well, play the game. I mean, I've got to work and what have you. And I'm, I'm just pleased if he tries. And um, I think this... Uh, give a present. You don't have to have the reason of if you come top in class or now you have come top in class. So I'm going to give you a present. Some of the other kiddies can't have it. And I think it makes the child a bit priggish, you know. They go around and say, oh, look what Mummy gave me. I came top of the class. No, no, no. Don't you're, think getting it's good. A, you're getting away, Neva, from what I said originally. I said it was not the one who comes top of the class. I meant for those who are the middle or getting down towards the, the lower end of the class to give yeah. them some encouragement to go on. And once they have tried, once they have made the effort, I don't mean expensive watches all the time, of course. No, no, see, no, 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 I get as mad as a snake when there's this bribery. You have a bribe snout. Thank you very much. I'm mad to start with you. <laughs> you come as an honoured guest and they insult you before you start. Thank you very much, Mr. Dear. I'm sorry. But no. they do anything today. It doesn't matter with the children or adults or the dirtman or the tram guard. or the. They all want something, a bribe. What's in it for me? All the time. Yes, they do please. nothing. They labour not just for the reward of it. That's their duty. That's their job. But to bribe a kid with a watch or the dirtman because he doesn't bash the pajamas out of your dirt tin, you're supposed to give him ten bob and put it on the top at Christmas time. <laughs> and if you don't, the trend, watch out. You're to, no, it's bribery, it's graft, and it's corruption. I quite agree. I'll bring my string bass next time, but the theme will be no gri bribery, graft, or corruption. Now, you've got my teeth mixed up. Oh, you? and you're very good. You really are. And you have said something... Uh, Seriously, uh, very right there, that, that bribery and corruption is, is not a desirable thing. I think we all agree about that, but that is a different matter 
to uh, giving a, a child an encouragement to try a little harder. Oh, I, I, I agree. Really yeah, seriously that's believe that. encouragement, but this lass is referring to bribery. Yes, well, I think getting back to this letter, and I'm sorry we did get right away <laughs> from it, but, uh, but what you have said uh, makes you to be quite right, because um, you say that you highly praise her, give her a few extra shillings and her pocket money, and give her all the encouragement in the world, and I think really and truly that's all you need do. All in agreement? Yes. yes. And you two are? Yes. Definitely. And we're friends again? Always friends. Thank you very much. So that's really <laughs> magnificent. All right, well, now here's uh, one from professional. Um, Sydney letter. But ever since my son was a schoolboy, he's been interested in boxing. He's competed very successfully in amateur tournaments and has devoted most of his spare time to training in the gymnasium. Now the trainer wants him to turn professional because he says the boy could go a long way. My son, who is 19 and an apprentice, thinks it would be a good idea, but his mother and I are against it. Although I don't mind him fighting for a living, I think he might not do very well and then be left without a trade. My wife is horrified at the idea because she's seen some films knocking the boxing world and thinks that whereas, as an amateur, he's fought only a few rounds at a time, once he becomes a pro, he'll get disfigured and might be used for other people's benefit. How do they fall, eh? Well, yes. I don't know. Oh. Betty. Well, I used to go to fights, and uh, I used to think it was very exciting. And uh, now I'm quite ashamed of myself. And I th I'm dead against it now, from mm. uh, from what I've seen. I, I think it's a horrible profession. Sorry? Well, the thing that worries me is what's going to happen to this boy when his professional days are over. He hasn't got a trade, he's got nothing. He might end up a good... A bit like Jimmy Carruthers, but he might not. Mm. Neva. I'd do everything in my power, I honestly believe, Terry, to stop a son of mine becoming a boxer. Why, Neva? Overcoming his natural objection to everything else. Yes, because I once met a, a young boxer uh, from another part of the world, and he was a beautiful-looking boy in what the boxing term is, in the silk, mm. Mm. physically, and a lovely face. And that boy was like a ten-year-old child. He was so punch drunk. It, it really shocked me. I, I, the whole evening was spoiled for me. Yes, well, of course. Uh, that is the bad and the sad side of it, Terry. Mm. But I don't think you'd go to anyone more authoritative on the subject than someone we have here in the audience tonight. Our mm -hmm. good friend, Fred Henneberry. He's here with us tonight. Would you like to meet him? Oh, yeah, I'd like to very much. You know, Fred, come in. Fred, would you come over and meet Terry? Terry, I'd like you to meet Fred Henneberry. Mm, very good, indeed. Terry, dear, Fred Henneberry. How do you Hi, do, Fred? Terry? It's a pleasure. Thanks, I've been waiting for for a long, long time. Thank you Would very you much. like to sit in with us and oh, have I'd a bit of a discussion? Yes. Okay. Yes, sounds very interesting. All right, man. Come Thank through, you. won't you? By the way, I'd like to introduce the girls, Miss uh, Riddell, Miss O'Neill, Miss Neva Carr-Glynn, Mr. Fred Henneberry. Yeah. How do you do? You? Girls, well, you've heard a bit of the discussion so far. Fred, I don't know whether you'd agree with what the ladies have said, would you? Uh, no, of course not. No, no, I couldn't do that, Terry. I, I, That's good I, enough. By the way, Fred, just before you start, may I uh, explain this, um, that uh, somebody who may not have caught your name, Fred Henneberry, was, of course, the middleweight champion of Australia, I think just before the uh, uh, Second World War. Is that not quite right? That's right, yes, in the 30s. We, you um, we fought around. Ambrose Palmer one time. Ambrose Palmer, yes, three times, and Ron Richards about ten, and oh, quite a lot of And you fought fighters. overseas? Yes, yes, Terry. What's your best fight, Fred? Oh, I think the the uh, best memory I have for overseas is at Mad Madison Square Garden. You fought there, mm, I didn't know. I had to go around there. Who'd you fight? Uh, Georgie Abrams. Mm, he was third good. middleweight in the world at the sure. time. Uh, we got a draw. That's the nearest an Australian mm, has well, got a winning ranking there. indeed. Well, there's no doubt about it, ladies and gentlemen. Fred Henneby can give us some authoritative views on the subject. So, would you like to tell us now? I'm sorry I interrupted you there. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I was just looking at the letter there, Terry. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Do you feel the boxing game can be a desirable thing, Fred? Well, I think the girls are overlooking one thing, and that is the, the boys' love for boxing. Mm -hmm. Now, it's probably hard for them to understand that uh, a boy does like to box. I know myself, when I was a kid, I'd walk four miles to have a fight. Uh, let's <laughs> call it a, uh, a boxing match. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I didn't worry about what I got for it, because that was the, the last thought. So you must not overlook the fact that the boy may love the boxing game, which is a grand and manly sport, if I may say so. Mm, I think right? so, too. Yes, my word. I think you've got everything in your favour on that. Joe, you... No, but I was interested. Uh, Fred, what happens if he's a bad boxer? 
a bad fighter. Well, he shouldn't get past where he is now. Oh, I see. You the point? Yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, if he has one or two uh, professional fights now, Fred, it will quickly be decided for him whether he's good, bad or indifferent. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if, he's, if he's not as good as what he thinks he is, he should get right out of it altogether? Right. Right. I notice here that the, the, the trainer wants him to turn professional because he says the boy could go a long way. Well, now the par parents have got to assess the ability of the trainer to judge just how good the boy may be. I Look, Edward. Well, you draw the wrath of heaven on your head when you make these comments, so let heaven speak. Uh, ladies, which of the three? Miss Riddell, your mouth, mouth is wide open. open. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't see why two women or one woman is arranging this man's life. I would like to know, what would you do, Emrys? You'd tell the girl, wouldn't you? I'm sorry, my dear, I've fallen in love with your mother. We are going to get married. Oh, direct question or we're not answer, direct answer. Oh, Emrys Jones, please. Uh, well, I, I, that, that's, a, that's a point. I mean, spends... Uh, you see, I can't understand what you mean by... It, 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 he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't said he's in love with the daughter, has he? Yes, he's her fiancé. He's her fiancé. Oh, right. he's not now. He's not in love with the daughter now. Might, might, might just you know, sort of be attracted to her or something. Mm. Think? Well, and, and, uh, uh, he's stumbling. Look, I'll tell you what <laughs> I think we had better do on this, what? because... What? Um, um, well, it's one of those problems. I mean, if you put yourself in, in the, well, what would you do? I haven't got the faintest idea what I would do if I were faced with these circumstances. Therefore, the only thing I can suggest out of what your conversation has led us to is that you have, if you like, a round table conference and the three of you in it. Look, Terry, two people oh. can be happy making one unhappy. Now, that's always better than for three people to be unhappy. Exactly. That's why she shouldn't tell the daughter. Not in the family. Here we go, and on that, that high note of complete confusion, <laughs> I'm sorry, distracted to Victoria, I, I really can't see that we can give you an answer to this. It's one which only your own conscience can guide you, and then that's the only thing we can do, I think, for us to meddle in a thing like that, say you should carry out this, uh, this action or not, is a very bad thing. Okay? We okay. must leave it to your individual conscience. Mm. Another problem now, which fortunately doesn't occur very often in Australia, from average teenager, New South Wales letter, says, I'm a very average teenager of 15. Like any Australian girl of my age, I have many friends, both boy and girl. One of my special friends is a coloured boy of 16 years. Both my parents and some neighbours uh, neighbors lecture me about my friendship with this boy. I want to do right by my parents and obey them, but I think this ban on colour is both idiotic and wrong. There's nothing serious between the boy and myself. Will you please tell me what you think is the right thing to do? Continue my friendship with this coloured boy, he's an Australian, by the way, or obey my parents and this idiotic band, as she phrases it. Well, Josephine O'Neill. Well, I think that this girl has exactly the right idea in that the colour ban is absolutely idiotic. But on the other hand, she has got a duty here to obey her parents. She's 15, and she has a duty to consider their prejudices. Well, if, she, uh, unless she can talk them out of it. Well, what does she do? She takes the lesser of two evils. I think, I think she, she could explain to the boy, that's one time for good, honest speaking, and say, you know, another generation, they've got very old-fashioned ideas. I will have to consider them. You know, it makes, it makes no difference to my friendship with you or anyone else. Pretty hard, I think, for a 15-year-old girl to uh, have to convey that sort of sentiment. I think it's a uh, pretty tough proposition. I well, I, think it, it. I, I don't think she'll hurt the boy as much uh, as if, I take it there at high school together or something, as if she suddenly <coughs> awkwardly turns away and starts cutting him. Why enough, Joe? Well, that's a good point. Tiki, do you agree with that? Yes, well, not? I do agree with that, but I think perhaps her parents may not mind if she goes out with a group, including this boy. She says that they're not um, serious about each other, so I don't think, perhaps the fit parents don't like her going out by herself with him. She's only 15. Mm -hmm. That may be more their worry than the fact that he's a And that wouldn't cut him boy. off completely, which would hurt him very much. That's a good thought. Emerus. 
Yes, I, I, I think this is quite a problem, actually, because uh, so many people uh, say they have no colour bar at all, and as soon as this comes up, then they start making uh, excuses uh, and uh, bringing in ways, ideas why they, they shouldn't uh, uh, be friendly and so forth. But I, I do think um, a girl of 15 or any age is a jolly good thing to get to know all nationalities. I mean, Greek, French, Italian, even... Welsh peasants like myself, you know, <laughs> I mean, um, but it, 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 uh, it, well, I was going to say, it colours the whole life, I mean, you know, that, <laughs> but you know, it gives enough. them a, 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 you know, um, a sort of different outlook on life, yes, isn't which it? is very necessary, because I think, too, what uh, may, w is not mentioned in this letter, but may be behind the parents' mind, is the difference in, uh, in situation, the difference in methods of living, modes of living, qualities of living, and all that sort of thing. Um, they may be afraid that uh, with this coloured boy his standards may not be as high mm -hmm. as theirs and they're worried for their daughter's sake on that account, apart from colour. Would you agree with that or not, Betty? Uh, I would suggest that the best way to make coloured people fit to live with is to give them a decent way of life. That's the first thing All right. you can do. I think if this, Austra if this Australian coloured boy um, and the girl are friends, they have probably been friends since school. They all know each other, they may come from, the, live in the same place. Mm -hmm. But we are all stopped from doing things when we're young. And I don't think this is any more serious than being stopped from uh, um, going to the pictures more than once a week or something like that. When you're old enough, you do what you want. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you would suggest that at the moment, at least, then she obeys her parents. That's the case. I would suggest that children always obey their parents. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Could I see the slight bulge in your cheek where your tongue is? <laughs> no, no, no doubt, for heaven's no. sake. No, I believe no. that. I believe that. I believe right. it makes it well, for a better a... Um, relationship all round. And Joe, do you believe yes, she should I, obey her parents? Yes, I, I agree with I agree with Betty on that. All right, Vicky. Yes, I agree you too. You too. Well, it looks like the consensus of opinion, Emrys. Do you go along with it too or not? Well, I suppose it must be our parents, but you know, sort of, uh, have a word with your parents about these. You people. must agree with the minority. Yes, the majority. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, girls. Well, you've decided, and so that's the way it's going to be, as far as we're concerned. Now it's up to you, uh, average teenager. But it does seem, at, at the moment anyway, at your age of 15, it might be a better thing if you do obey your parents. And certainly, if you can uh, smooth it over for the boy. Uh, in the way that Joe suggested, that may be a very helpful thing too. Right. Just imagine the excitement of the Burnett home at Rose Bay when Mr. Burnett gave Mrs. Burnett a brand new Pope washer. But Mrs. Burnett had a problem. What wash day product would give her the best results from her new washer? Then the problem solved itself when from the washer she pulled out... Rinso. Rinso comes in most new washing machines. Yes, the makers of Pope and all other leading washing machines recommend Rinso and only Rinso for use in their machines. Take a tip from those who know, all leading makers tell you so. Use Rinso in your washing machine and make the perfect wash they clean. Rinso is safe for all types of washers, and in washing machines, as in coppers, those richer, softer Rinso suds get clothes dazzling clean, brighter than brand new. Rinso costs less, too. Compare the price. Compare the size of all the wash day products. Rinso gives you far more suds for your money. Rinso is the best wash day value of all. Here's one for the uh, senior citizens now. It's too old at 60, the signature says, my husband, although only 60, has retired and our eldest son is now managing the family business. After a few weeks at home, my husband decided that a life of idleness did not suit him and he wants to buy a dairy farm. I'm appalled at the idea. We'd have to sever all our old associations and live a totally different life, uh, one not suited to our years. How can I convince my husband that we're too old to make a change? Dicky Taylor, are you too old? <laughs> well, ra while I realize that um, 60 is not old, this lady would have to give up a lot, and I think her husband is being a little bit selfish in expecting her to go and start a dairy farm at her age. Uh, she evidently doesn't want to, and I think per perhaps if she tells him that uh, she doesn't want to do it and that it wouldn't be good for her, 
-hmm. he would think differently. She's probably saying, oh, you're too old, and that, that makes him more determined to have a dairy farm. Fair enough. Joe is giving off with sighs of disbelief about the whole of this peroration. Yes, because I can't, I can't bear the, the uh, uh, Tiki's assumption. Sorry, Tiki, it sounds arrogant, but I can't bear the assumption that, that the woman must have the soft thing all the way through like this. Mm -hmm. After all, the important thing is that her husband has now the galling uh, sight of his own son running a business that he himself would love to be still in. Mm -hmm. And the dairy farm uh, is uh, a project that the s husband will probably grow out of. But I'd encourage him to the point of getting him to go and stay on a dairy farm and then see what it's like after a couple of months. I think he may get another business then. But it's grossly unfair for her to say, I want to stay put, therefore you've got to decline into something in a chair on the veranda. Well, good for you, Joe. Thank you very much. Do you uh, agree with that or not? Oh, I think, I think you're being terribly wise about the whole thing. I really do. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, uh, there's just one point. I do think he, uh, uh, he ought to be do have something, some hobby or, or even a dairy farm he wants at 60. Because, you know, haven't you seen so many people uh, at that age, they probably retire and then they just go to seed. Yeah. Rust yes. away. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Of course. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Amos, but I do think that the dairy farms these days are a very different proposition from what they were, well, even before the war, as far as it yes, goes. They're all mechanized now, mm -hmm. you know, none of this old business. It's mm -hmm. done with machines, <laughs> mm. and it's, it's a much different life. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to have a hundred cows, for heaven's sake, to start <laughs> with. Yeah. I mean, a few cows, and it yeah. could be a very great interest for both of them. I really mm. do think so. There's nothing worse than, than rusting and wasting away. Betty. What do you think? Yes, well, look, I think it would be wonderful to have a dairy farm. I know it's terribly hard work. Um, if, he, if he is an not rich, I would say uh, don't do it because you might put all your money into a dairy farm uh, and go broke or, or, or pack up. I mean, you might not be able to stand the physical strain. Well, uh, if he's a man who can afford a hobby, a yeah. farm as a hobby, any sort of a farm, not m miles in the bush. I would say it would be absolutely marvellous. Well, it needn't be hard work. That's wonderful, Betty. Thank you so much. It, uh, Am I the only one on your side? Am I? Support all of our yes, ideas, I think, really. And, uh, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> too old at 60. You're not too old at 60. Get out among the cows. Or at least uh, let your husband buy some sort of a farm, and I think you'll both be pretty happy. I really do. Well, now here's a very quick one just to finish up on, if we may, from J.E.N., a West Australian letter. I'm a girl of 16, and due to the fact that I have no brothers or sisters, I'm seldom allowed to go to parties and dances. If I go, my parents insist on my father driving me to and from the dance hall or party. I know they mean well, but as this happens every time, I'm seldom invited a second time. Boys I know never often take me home afterwards, and I really get asked out by them. Also, I cannot dance very well, and my parents will not allow me to take dancing lessons. What should I do? I don't wish to hurt my parents, she says. Right? Now, remembering what you said a few letters ago, obey your parents, see what you can do with this one. Joe. This is, this is a social problem, and, and it's up to her to persuade her parents, first of all, to have boys and girls to the house, and then see where her social life goes from there. Thank you. Tiki Taylor. Well, I think she should have boys and girls at the house, but I do think her parents are being a little possessive. Mm -hmm. I think they should let her go home by herself, uh, definitely be, be in by a certain time. I don't, I don't mean have a free hand altogether. But 16? But, um, 16? Yes, I think she should be allowed to go home from a dance boy by herself, providing she's in by a certain time. Good Betty. No, I don't think a girl of 16 uh, should be taken home by a boy um, who uh, mightn't be able to handle a car properly. Uh, taxis. I don't. Well, I, don't I, I think a father uh, should collect her, and I think it's marvellous of him to care enough All to right. collect her. All right. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Emerus Jones, you have the last word on this. Well, I've got the absolute complete answer to the whole thing. Good. <laughs> Forget about the dancing. Go to the theatre. Take your mother and father, and don't worry who <laughs> takes <laughs> you. <laughs> Come and see us. I'll take it home myself. <laughs> Well, that's all for now, but um, if you think your problem would make good discussion and you'd like some help in solving it, put it into 50 or 100 words, will you, and send it to the station. Our show is produced by Harry Harper and featured uh, Elizabeth Riddell, Josephine O'Neill and Tiki Taylor. Our guest was Emrys Jones. This is Terry Deer saying good night and thanks to you all. <laughs> We call
Jolie.